Welcome to week 49 patch notes for Icarus. Firstly, I just want to apologize for missing the week 48 patch notes video for you guys, but my internet was pretty much down for all of last week due to building work going on outside of my house. So first of all, I'm just going to read a little bit through the patch notes and I'll put it up on screen for you as well. Once I look through some of the patch notes, I'll dive into the game and I'll show you how sitting in chairs looks like. It doesn't take a great imagination to think about what that looks like. I'll show you the water bombs in use and how to craft them now, along with frag grenades as well, as they've had a bit of a rework, they do a bit more damage, etc. After that, we'll jump back into the patch notes and have a little look at the update on performance and optimization, which is in the patch notes, along with having a little chat about the decentralization uh, and dedicated servers, which are being worked on for Icarus as well. And then some news on next week's patch, so week 50 as well, which we can take a little bit of a look. So the patch notes for this week start off with, this week brings our fourth community feedback update, focusing on player-driven improvements and changes shared with us on feature upvote. Alongside these changes, we also spent time this week speaking about some of our ongoing work and up-and-coming features we're excited about and debuting. A large performance improvement is planned and we go into that in depth about what the changes we're making are and our expectations for how this will impact performance overall. We also speak about our upcoming dynamic quests and open world mode and finally the player to player benefits and changes as a result of our up and coming data decentralization. An update on performance optimization. Performance is always something at the front of our mind in our work on Icarus and while this has been a long standing issue, addressing it has remained a priority. We have identified an issue that is in early testing and could result in a large performance improvement for a number of players. Icarus heavily utilizes Unreal Engine's runtime virtual texture, RVT technology to provide a terrain texture details and environmental blending for our rocks and cliffs. I mean, I'm going to pretend what half of that stuff is, but okay. We have found that our heavy use of this tech has led to a bottleneck on the GPU. We're working hard to remove this bottleneck, which we expect to significantly improve performance. But this change will take a while to implement due to us having to make changes to a large number of terrain assets. I am curious if this is the issue I've been running into basically since day one. Whenever I'm next to a mountain, my FPS just tanks. And sometimes when I'm mining rock, just randomly it'll just tank. And the patch notes go on to say improvements such as this are time consuming and once discovered, the work to rectify them may overlap one or more of our regular weekly updates. However, a portion of our team is dedicated to improving performance and their work is integral to our future plans and ongoing improvements of the Icarus experience. I wouldn't mind if the devs took like a week or two off from posting updates for Icarus as these are just... You know, nobody says they have to post an update every week. If they've got, like, major stuff to work on and not much, like, to give us, um, you know, I don't think they should feel obliged to give us a patch every week uh, as long as they're working on this important stuff on the back end for a major patch in, like, say, like, two or three weeks' time. I'd be totally down with that. Let's jump in game now and take a look at this week's changes. So water bombs are now active in the game and you will find them in the Tier 2 section of your tech tree. And they're right at the start here, water bombs. It will cost 5 leather and 15 fiber to craft. Once you unlocked water bombs, you'll come to your crafting bench and you'll see it in your craftable items in the crafting bench. You will need to put your water source inside of the crafting bench as it does require water along with the leather and fiber. You do get 5 water bombs per craft as well. So you just go ahead, click it and click craft. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a, a happy little fire. So you, you're going to have to put the water bombs on your hotbar. This is the first time I'm doing this. So let's just throw... It's just left click and you just target your shot. They're actually not that bad. Some of you will be happy to know that you can now sit down in the rustic chairs. Now to get the rustic chairs, you do need the rustic decoration bench, which you can craft. So all you do is press F on a chair now and you can sit 
sit down and um, yeah, expose yourself like that, I guess. But yeah, so now you can sit down in your chairs. So in the week 49 update, grenades have been given a good old overhaul because I covered these when they first released and they were absolutely useless. Um, you can go back and check that video if you like. I'll leave it on the screen somewhere for you to check out to show you how bad they were if you've never used grenades before. So you make them on the machining bench and they cost one iron ingot and 10 gunpowder to make a frag grenade and you do will need a biofuel source as well. A biofuel can. It takes up a very little fuel to make one of these grenades so you can make quite a few with one biofuel can. Also to make a smoke grenade you will have to use one iron ingot and 10 stone and again a biofuel source. So you do have to unlock these on the tech tree as well. They are in the tier 3 and tier they are here just above the recurve bow. To use a frag grenade you are going to have to put it on your hotbar. So let's put a smoke grenade on here and a frag grenade. I'll do what I did on my original video for grenades and that is go fishing with them. Well, the explosion is definitely bigger. It killed the big fish, but um, the piranha survived. Got a wolf in the uh, tree line there. Let's throw that, see if that does anything. The throw mechanic isn't great still. And the bounce is huge. So another little change this week, and I think it's actually a really good one. So the repair hammer and the upgrade hammer are now one. So like if you want to just repair, you can still repair with the hammer. But you also can press R, bring up the wheel, and you can also upgrade stuff now. So this frees up a, a action slot on your hotbar for you as well. If you had mo if you had both tools on your action bar at one point, this now frees up one. It's a nice little change actually, and I find that's more important than frag grenades. To be fair. But that's just my opinion. What do you think of this change? Let me know down in the comments, guys. Alright, so data decentralization is here. Now, I'm going to try and TLDR this, but I will leave a link to this patch note in the pinned comment as well. Or feel free to pause it and read through this at your own leisure. So the TLDR is data decentralization is where it moves the information from the hosting cloud hosting provider that um, Icarus was using to where they put all the information on your computer instead. I think that is the TLDR. Uh, like I say, feel free to read through this yourselves to make uh, more sense of it. And it's a good thing in every way possible. Uh, so yeah, feel free to read through that. Coming in the week 52 patch is... We are moving ahead with our plans to develop the next stages of this feature of open world, starting with the first expansion to the world. Next week, Dynamic Quests. Open world has been a big success and your support of the new mode has been incredibly encouraging and a proud moment for our team. We've done a great job. Like this was all, I think this was always going to be a great uh, addition to the game. Dynamic quests require you to build a short range radio on the planet which you can interact with to trigger the start of the objectives. These dynamic quests will provide objectives in the local area and the biome to where you have built your short range radio, keeping your missions close to your base and resources. Completing these dynamic quests will reward you with specialized pod that drops down to the surface and when interacted with will provide you with a few different options to choose from such as food or as tools for your payment. Depending on the difficulty of the quest, the rewards will scale appropriately and players will also receive XP for completing these quests. Dynamic quests are the first step in our efforts towards building the open world into being a vibrant, engaging game mode. And the early support you have shown us has given us acknowledgement of your appreciation for this effort. We're excited to build into the future of this mode with you.
Thanks for watching guys, as always, leave a comment down below, let me know what your favourite feature from this week's patch was, and are you looking forward to the week 50 patch, because that does sound interesting. As always, leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here, it greatly helps my channel, and I appreciate it a lot. Make sure you've got your notifications turned on, because next week I have a minimum of 7 videos coming out, and I'm going to be playing the release of Frozen Flame survival game on Thursday, so you saw me play the beta of that last Monday, now you're going to see the full game, I've been playing it behind closed doors, and my god, it is a good game.